Good morning, everyone. Happy Friday. Hey, I wanted to reach out to you guys this morning and uh, tell you guys thanks for watching my videos and stuff. I'm super excited. Um, I, uh, um, I have some concerns I wanted to share with you this morning, as I usually do. Uh, I wanted to um, discuss a little bit about the, um, uh, the, uh, the reason for my title for my post today, um, having to do with Brad Little and Karl Marx and uh, including Horatio Bunce and, uh, and Davy Crockett in the mix. Um, and um, I'm hoping I do uh, do the video justice. I will be adding it to my website, to the post that I did this morning. But uh, I thought it was really important for us to, uh, as we consider the elections that are coming up, that Brad Little now in an election year has decided that he wanted to, you know, call an extraordinary session and, you know, and he's going to try to baffle us all with his BS and things of that nature. I wanted to be able to call him out on that. Uh, and hopefully you guys will too. Uh, I was on the radio this morning in Twin. Um, it was always a pleasure to uh, to speak with Bill and uh, Bill Colley over there um, about some of these things that we're facing, uh, the intricate nature of what we're facing, not only in our local jurisdictions, but how amazing it is and how brilliantly constructed it is, this global plan where everything seems to be happening everywhere at the same time. And so I'm going to do my best today to be able to go through a story called Not Yours to Give. Um, it's, a, it's a story of about uh, Davy Crockett. Uh, it is it is incredibly important for you guys to uh, understand as we go forward, especially as we look to um, what the government is actually doing as inflation costs rise and governments in election seasons want to be continually elected and make it look like they're really appealing to the people. Number one, Brad Little has never appealed to the people in my call, in my judgment. He's always insulated himself, and I've said this before, by his own cronies, his own bureaucratic, unelected people where his money comes from. He doesn't seem to be concerned about the election at all, um, and I'm really concerned about that. He's not kissing babies. He's not shaking hands. He's not down in the trenches with the people that are hurting. He wants to be able to drop helicopter money from on high. Now, although he, although there are certain things that he said that he has done that has been good, and I won't deny that, overall, he's principally flawed or he's being directed and controlled by people that are not us, which is a big concern. Anytime a, government, um, anytime a government wants to be able to do something for the sake of the children or in the name of security or for the greater good or whatever it is, you know, people tend to believe that. And as emotionally charged as we are now, as we're all losing money and losing our homes and, and all of that, and we're failing to realize the importance of the fact that he's doing the bidding for uh, Klaus Schwab and the Great Reset and things of that nature, um, if we have to focus small because people can only go small, that's okay. But the idea that the governments have the ability to be able to give you money that was already yours is, is, is flawed to begin with. And I think it's based this not yours to give story is hugely important because it helps people understand what government authority is and the intent for which the government authority is actually giving money. So I'm gonna, I read it through and I highlighted some areas, so I'm not gonna read the entire thing, but it's important enough for you guys to, to, to share, uh, to share and to understand uh, as we go forward here in Idaho. Um, is the government charity really theft? Uh, one day in the United States House of Representatives, a bill was taken up appropriating money for the benefit of a widow of a distinguished naval officer. Remember, support the military, support the troops. Um, several beautiful speeches had been made um, in support and the speaker was just about to put in question when Davy Crockett arose. Mr. Speaker, I have much respect for the memory of the deceased as much as I have sympathy for the sufferings of the living. If suffering for the sufferings of the living, um, if suffering there be as any man in the house, but we must not permit our respect for the dead or our sympathy for a part of the living to lead us in to an act of injustice to the balance of the living. Isn't that what we're hearing today? What he's basically saying is, is that, that well, never mind. I'll keep going. Um, uh, as part of a living to lead us into an act of injustice in the balance of living, Congress has no power to appropriate this money as an act of charity. Congress has no right to be able to appropriate a dollar for public money. Um, several years ago, let's see, Crockett gave the explanation. Several years ago, I... Um, I was one evening standing on the steps of the Capitol with some other members of Congress when our attention was attracted by the great light over Georgetown. It was evidently a large fire. We jumped into the hack and drove over as fast as we could in spite of all that could be done. Many houses were burned and many families were made homeless besides some of them had lost but all their clothes. 
they had on. The weather was so cold, and when I saw the women and children suffering, I felt that something ought to be done for them. The next morning, a bill was passed introducing uh, and appropriating $20,000 for their relief. Does that sound familiar? We put aside all other businesses and rushed it through as soon as we could. In the name of, of, of right, for the benefit of all. The government, we're here to help you. Um, uh, so, uh, let's see what happened. So, um, so he decided that um, he was going to go on the um, campaign, pro, uh, the campaign trail, right? And he comes across this man. It says, and, uh, and he says, you know what? I know you. You're Colonel Crockett. I've seen you once before and voted for you the last time you were elected. I suppose you are out electioneering right now, but you had better not waste your time or mine. I shall not vote for you again. But you gave a vote last winter, which shows that you either not have the capacity to understand the Constitution or, or that you wanting the honesty and firmness to be guided by it. But an understanding of the Constitution different from mine I cannot overlook, because the Constitution, to be worth anything, must be held sacred, as rigidly observed as in all the provisions. The man who wields power and misinterprets it is more dangerous the more honest he is. My papers say that last winter you voted for a bill appropriating $20,000 to some sufferers by a fire in Georgetown. Is that true? But certainly nobody will complain, and this was, um, this was Crockett, but certainly no one will complain that the great and rich country like ours should give insignificant sums of $20,000 to relieve its suffering for women and children. He says, it's not the government, Colonel, that I complain of. It is principle. In the first place, the government ought to have in the treasury no more than enough for its legitimate purposes. The power of collecting and dispersing money at pleasure is the most dangerous power that can be entrusted to man, particularly under the system of collecting revenue by a tariff which reaches every man in the country, no matter how poor he may be, and the poorer he is, the more he pays in proportion to his means. So you see that while you are contributing to relieve one, you are drawing from it thousands who are even worse off than he. If you had the right to give anything, the amount was simply a matter of the discretion to you, and you had as much right to give $2 million as $20,000. If you have the right to give one, you have the right to give all. And as the Constitution neither defines charity nor stipulates the amount, you are at liberty to give any and everything which you may believe or profess to believe is charity to any amount that you may properly think. Congress has no right to give charity. Individual members may give as much of their own money as they please, but they have no right to touch a dollar of public money for that purpose. If they had shown their sympathy, talking about Congress, uh, for the sufferers by contributing one week's pay each, it would have made over $13,000. There are plenty of wealthy men in and around Washington who have given 20 who could have given $20,000 without depriving themselves even of the luxury of life. The congressmen chose to keep their own money, which if reports be true, some of them spent not very credibly, and the people about Washington no doubt applauded you for relieving them from the necessity of giving what was not yours to give. So you see, Colonel, you have violated the Constitution in what I consider a vital point. It is a precedent fraught with danger to this country, for when Congress once begins to stretch its power beyond the limits of the Constitution, there is no limit to it and no security for the people. I have no doubt you acted honestly, Bunt said, but that does not make it any better. Well, my friend, you hit the nail upon the head, Crockett said, when you said that I had not a sense to understand the Constitution. I intended to be guided by it and, and thought that I had studied it fully. I have heard many speeches in Congress about the power of Congress and what you may have said here and, and, and at your plow has got more hard sound evidence in the, all the fine speeches I've ever heard. If I have ever taken the view of it that you have, I would have put my head into the fire before I would have given it that vote. And if you will forgive me and vote for me again, if I ever vote another constitu unconstitutional law, I wish that I may be shot. 
But I will trust you again upon one condition, Bunt said. You say that you are convinced that your vote was wrong. Your acknowledgement of it will do more good than me beating you for it. No, Colonel, we are not rich people in this section, but we have plenty of provisions to contribute for a barbecue and some spare for those that have none. Fellow citizens, I, I present myself before you today feeling like a new man. And this is what uh, Crockett said to, in a meeting with people. My eyes have been opened lately to the truths which ignorance or prejudice or both had hair too hidden from my view. I feel that I can today offer you the ability to render you more valuable service than I have ever been able to render before. I am here today more for the purpose of acknowledging my error than to seek your votes. That I should make this acknowledgement is due to myself as well as to you. Whether you will vote for me is a matter for your consideration only. So what the story basically con con concludes is that you have a man that was running for office, um, Davy Crockett, right? He's electioneering and he's visiting with people around the community. He meets Horatio Bunce and Horatio Bunce questions him on the constitutionality of a bill. And the most amazing thing happens, and the reason why I think maybe I'm feeling a little funky about this today is, imagine what it would be like if we would have questioned those that are taking from us to give to other people. And the people that actually taken it had understood what we were trying to say and they actually went public and acknowledged their mistake. So today, you guys, I'm hoping that you'll find some benefit to this story. Uh, Idaho's in trouble, the country's in trouble. I know the people are in trouble. Everybody wants money. It looks more like the survival of the fittest. But if we're a constitutional republic, no matter how hard we're hurting, it's really, really important for us to hold government accountable and not allow them one more inch of abuse than they've already taken. It's in the best interest of the people to be able to communicate with the elected officials like Bunce did with Crockett. I don't see so much of that anymore. And people will are so reluctant and they'll say, well, nobody's listening to me anyway. Well, if nobody's listening to you as one person, then maybe you ought to think of a way to become five. And if five doesn't work, you become a way to become 10. And if 10 doesn't work, you, come become, you find a way to become 50 or 100 or 10,000. Ladies and gentlemen, September 1st, unless I'm mistaken, is an opportunity for the people in Idaho to be able to rise up and voice their displeasure in the, most, in, 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 in the best way and the most peaceful way possible. It doesn't mean that we gotta act like lunatics. It means we merely have to show them what we know and we have to tell him that we're not gonna put up with it. And that if he continues to go down this road and take money from us and give it to other people, that he will simply not be reelected. Many will say that he's insulated, and I've said that myself. If he's actually insulated by these people, then it's the, po then it's the power that's within us to be able to expose these corrupt agencies for everything that they are, and to be able to help others that don't know what we know, why it's important for them to be exposed and why little needs to be exposed, especially during such an inflationary period, which is only gonna get worse. Additionally, I see little as dangerous for other reasons. I see him as a globalist. I see him as a, I see him with Marxist leanings, definitely a neoconservative. If he's globalist and he's doing the globalist leanings, then he supports things like breaching dams. He supports things like climate change. He supports things that further the Great Reset. Is that somebody you really want in office? Because once you end up putting somebody like that in office, they become so well insulated, you won't be able to hold them accountable at all. So on this Friday, I wanted to be able to thank you guys. Um, it's already getting warm. Um, I'm hoping that you guys will internalize what I'm saying. You'll share the video maybe and encourage other people to become more active. If you can't show up to the special session, then I would suggest emailing relentlessly. I would suggest making every call that you can. I think calling your legislators are important. I think letting everybody know how you feel about the government taking your money to give it to other people, especially education, if you can believe that. All over again, right? I mean, I swore on the radio. I said, I think we're the, now we're the 69th state, worst state um, in education. Don't worry, I know there's 50 states or 57 states, depending on how you look at it. But you know, the worse they wanna make it and the more the education community 
wants to be able to plead for more money while nobody holds them accountable, we might as well be the hundredth worst state. So anyway, hope you guys have a good Friday. Uh, thank you guys for listening. Thanks. Bye.